is it, Mrs. Pierce? A young woman wants to see you, sir. A young woman? What does she want? Has she an interesting accent? Oh, something dreadful, sir. Let's have her up. Show her up, Mrs. Pierce. Very well, it's for you to say. Ah, this is rather a bit of luck. I'll show you how I make records. We'll set her talking, and I'll take her down in Bell's visible speech, then in broad Romic. Then we'll get her on the phonograph so that you can turn her on as often as you like with the written transcripts before you. This is the young woman, sir. Oh, no. This is the girl I jotted down last night. She's no use. I've got all the records I want of a listen grove lingo. I'm not going to waste another cylinder on it. Be off with you. I don't want you. Don't you be so saucy. You ain't heard what I come for yet. Did you tell him I come in a taxi? Nonsense, girl. What do you think a gentleman like Mr. Higgins cares what you came in? Oh, we are proud. Well, he ain't above giving lessons, not him. I heard him say so. And I ain't asking for any compliments. My money's not good enough. I can go elsewhere. Good enough for what? Good enough for you. Now, you know, don't you? I come to have lessons. I have in a pay form to make no mistake. Well, what do you expect me to say? Well, if you was a gentleman, you might ask me to sit down, I think. And don't I tell you I'm bringing you business? Pickering, shall we ask this baggage to sit down, or shall we throw her out of the window? Oh, I won't be called a baggage, not when I've offered to pay like any lady. But what is it you want? I want to be a lady in a, in a flower shop. Instead of selling flowers at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. But they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. Well, he said he could teach me. So here I am, ready to pay, not asking any favour, and he treats me as if I were dirt. Well, I know what lessons cost, and I'm ready to pay. How much? Now you're talking. I knew you'd come off it when you saw a chance of getting back at me a bit of what you chucked at me last night. You'd had a chop in, hadn't you? Uh, sit down. Perhaps you can't make a costume of it. Sit down. Uh, what is your name? Eliza Doolittle. Won't you please sit down, Miss Doolittle? Oh, yes, I, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> How much do you propose to pay me for the lessons? Oh, I know it's right. A lady friend of mine gets French lessons for 18 pence an hour from a real French gentleman. Well, you wouldn't have the face to ask me the same for teaching me my own language as you would for French. So I won't pay more than a shilling. Take it or leave it. Pickering, you know, if you consider a shilling, and not just as a simple shilling, but, but as a percentage of this girl's income, well, it, it works out as fully equivalent to 60 or 70 pounds from a millionaire. By George, it's the biggest offer I ever got. Uh, 60 pounds? Oh, oh, I never offered you 60 pounds. Well, well I ain't got 60 pounds. Well, hold your tongue. Well, where would I get 60 pounds? Oh, don't cry, you silly girl. Oh. Sit down. Nobody's going to touch oh. your money. Somebody is going to touch you with a broomstick if you don't stop your sniveling. Now, sit down. If I decide to teach you, I shall be worse than two fathers to you. Here. What's that for? To wipe your eyes. To wipe any part of your face that feels moist. Remember, that is your handkerchief. That is your sleeve. Don't mistake the one for the other if you wish to become a lady in a shop. Higgins, I'm interested. What about your boat that... You could pass her off as a duchess at the embassy ball. I'll say you're the greatest teacher alive if you can make that good. I'll bet you all the expenses of the experiment, you can't do it. And I'll even pay for the lessons. Oh, you're real good. Thank you, Captain. It's almost irresistible. She's so deliciously low, so horribly dirty. Oh, why I dirty? I wash my face and hands before I call my dick. I'll take it. I'll make a duchess of this draggle-tailed gutter snipe. Oh! I'll start now. Today, this very moment, I... Mm. 
Take it away and clean her, Mrs. Pierce. A sandpaper, if it won't come off any other way. Is there a good fire in the kitchen? Yes, but... Take all her clothes off and burn them. Ring up and order some new ones. You can wrap her in brown paper till they come. Oh, you're no gentleman. You ain't to talk of such things. Well, I'm a good girl, I am. And I know what the likes of you are, I do. We want none of your slum prudery here, young woman. You must learn to behave like a duchess. Take it away, Mrs. Pierce. She gives you any trouble, wallop her. I'll call the police, I will, but I've no place to put her. Put her in the dustbin. Oh! <laughs> oh, come, Higgins. Do be reasonable. You must be reasonable, Mr. Higgins. Really, you must. You can't walk over everybody like this. I walk over everybody? My dear Mrs. Pierce, my dear Pickering. I never had the slightest intention of walking over anybody. All I propose is that we should be kind to this poor girl. If I did not express myself clearly, it was, it was because I did not wish to hurt her delicacy. <laughs> or yours. But, sir, you can't take a girl up like that as if you were picking up a pebble on the beach. Why not? Why not? But you don't know anything about her. What about her parents? She may be married. Gone. <laughs> there. As the girl very properly says, gone. I'll marry May. <laughs> By George Eliza. The streets will be strewn with the bodies of men shooting themselves for your sake before I've done with you. Here. Here. I I'm going. Ain't your fist jumpy, eh? Well, I won't have no balmy seat in me. Oh, indeed. So I'm mad, am I? Oh, very well. And Mrs. Pierce, you needn't order the new clothes for her. Throw her out. Stop, Mr. Higgins. I won't allow it. Go home to your parents, girl. I ain't got no parents. Oh, she says she ain't got no parents. Now, what's all the fuss about? The girl doesn't belong to anybody. She's no use to anybody but me. Now, take her upstairs uh, but and... But what's to become of her? Is she to be paid anything? Oh, do be sensible, sir. What on earth will she want with money? She'll have her food and her clothes. She'll only drink if you give her money. Well, you are a brute. It's a lie. No one's ever saw the sign of liquor on me. Oh, sir, you're a gentleman. Don't let him speak to me like that. Does it occur to you, Higgins, that the girl has some feeling? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> No, no feelings we need bother about, have you, Eliza? Mr. Higgins, I must know on what terms a girl is to be here. What's to become of her when you finish your teaching? You must look ahead a little, sir. What's to become of her if I leave her in the gutter? Answer me that, Mrs. Pierce. Well, that's her own business, not yours, Mr. Higgins. Hmm. Well, after I've done with her, we can throw her back into the gutter, and then it will be her own business again, so that's all right. You know, feeling it, aren't you? You don't think of nothing but yourself. Yeah, I've had enough of this. I'm going. Eliza. Have a chocolate. As I know it might be in it. I've heard it go being drugged by the likes of you. A pledge of good faith, Eliza. I eat one half. You eat the other. Mm. You shall have boxes of them. Barrels of them. Every day. You shall live on them, eh? I wouldn't have edit that I'm too much of a lady to take it out of my mouth. Think of it, Eliza. Think of chocolates and rides in taxis and gold and diamonds. No, oh, I don't want no gold and no diamonds. I'm a good girl, I am. Excuse me, Higgins, but Mrs. Pierce is quite right. If this girl is to place herself in your hands for six months for an experiment in teaching, she must understand thoroughly what she's doing. Hmm. Eliza, come, come. come. <coughs> Eliza, you are to stay here for the next six months, learning how to speak beautifully like a lady in a florist shop. If you're very good and do whatever you're told, you shall sleep in a proper bedroom, have lots to eat, and money to buy chocolates and take rides in taxis. If you are naughty and idle, 
You will sleep in the back kitchen among the black beetles and be walloped by Mrs. Pierce with a broomstick. <laughs> At the end of six months, you shall go to Buckingham Palace in a carriage beautifully dressed. If the king finds out you are not a lady, you will be taken by the police to the Tower of London where your head will be cut off as a warning to other presumptuous flower girls. If you are not found out, you shall be given a present of seven and six to start life with as a lady in a shop. If you refuse this offer, you will be the most ungrateful, wicked girl, and the angels will weep for you. Satisfied, Pickering? Could I put it any more plainly or fairly, Mrs. Pierce? Oh, come with me, Eliza. Thank you, Mrs. Pierce. Bundle her off to the bathroom. Oh! If I don't like, and I won't let anybody wallop me. Oh, don't answer that, gal. If I'd have known that I was getting myself in for, I'd have never come up here. Oh, I'm a good girl, I am, and I won't be put apart. <laughs> Six months, three. If she has a good ear and a quick tongue, I shall take her anywhere and pass her off as anything. <laughs>